After gathering a general impression, begin your examination of each individual facial feature. First, assess the ears. To check the ear placement, imagine a straight line drawn from the outer corner of the eye. The upper portion of the ear should meet this line. If not, the ears may be considered low set. Now imagine a second line, drawn perpendicular to the first. Is the infant's ear straight along this axis? If it is tilted back, the ear may be in a posterior rotation. An atypical ear position is not dangerous, but may prompt consideration for an underlying genetic condition. Next, assess ear formation. Do the ears have a complete rim of skin surrounding them, called the helix? Does the skin inside the helix, called the cruce, have folds, or is it unusually smooth? Finally, check the skin beside the ear's tragus for pits and skin tags. While variation in ear formation can be normal, the presence of one of these minor variants may be associated with some genetic conditions, as well as hearing loss or anomalies of the kidneys, the development of which are controlled by some of the same genes as the ears. Now check the infant's eyes, again beginning with an inspection. Do they appear widely spaced? Does the opening of the eye, called the palpebral fissure, point upwards or downwards? Subtle variations in eye spacing and rotation are normal and may be inherited from healthy parents. To check the infant's pupils, you may have to coax her to open her eyes by turning off the lights or cupping your hand over her eyelids. When she opens them, quickly assess the infant's red reflex by shining the ophthalmoscope light on the eye. You should see a flash of red in each eye, indicating the normal presence of retinal vessels in the eye. If you see an asymmetric red reflex, particularly if the color seen is white, you may have detected a retinal anomaly, such as a congenital cataract or a retinoblastoma. Another atypical finding is called a coloboma, which are missing pieces of tissue in the structure that form the eye. A patient with either of these findings should be referred to both ophthalmology and medical genetics for further evaluation. Next, we examine the nose. In the newborn, the most important feature to assess is patency of the nares, as neonates are preferential nasal breathers. If there is any history of respiratory distress or noisy breathing when feeding or crying, Patency can be proven by passing a small French catheter through each nares. It is common for newborns to have transient obstruction from edema related to suctioning after birth, but the differential also includes coanal atresia or coanal stenosis, an improper formation or narrowing of the nasal airways. Coanal atresia is a characteristic finding of the genetic condition CHARGE syndrome, which is an acronym for coloboma of the eye, heart abnormalities, atresia of the coana, retardation of growth or development, genitourinary abnormalities, and ear abnormalities. Any infant found to have coenal atresia should be referred to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, as well as a medical geneticist. The final features of the face you will examine are the mouth and jaw. Gently insert your gloved index finger into the newborn's mouth. A healthy baby will reflexively suck on the glove. In the anterior portion of the mouth, you will feel the hard palate. As your finger travels backwards, you will feel the soft palate. A division or cleft in the hard palate or lip may be easy to detect by inspection. Clefts in the soft palate, however, are more difficult to observe by eye. A patient with a cleft palate or cleft lip should be referred to an ear, nose, and throat specialist and may need special help with feeding. Cleft palate is commonly an isolated congenital anomaly, but can also be associated with other medical conditions. Next, assess her tongue. Is she able to elevate her tongue and push it past the lower gums? If not, she may have ankyloglossia, more commonly known as tongue tie. This finding is a minor variant and is not a sign of a genetic condition, but could impair the infant's ability to breastfeed. A phrenotomy or release of the frenulum may be indicated if breastfeeding is painful or inefficient. Finally, do a brief overall examination of the infant's mouth, looking for other unusual findings such as a natal tooth.